Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're gonna take a look at the best team in Pokemon Go based on PE Pog kind now. We're going to have the best lead here, which is going to be Reggie Steel. You can actually sell PE Pog after like lead switches as well as closer, which of course are the three main roles for PvP. And we're going to see here the best say swap is apparently the Shadow Cherryzard, which I had already, and the best closer is Reggie Steel again, because we have that already as our lead. We're gonna have to use Shadow Staraptor, which I had to build just for this video, so let's move right into the gameplay with this basically best team in all positions best lead best closer and best say swap here right now and i have to say that i a lot of times use my closer as a say swap for this kind of team because um a lot, in a lot of scenarios it just made more sense to go for the say swap of the staraptor compared to the charizard depending on what the opponent brought, brought in here here right now first game we're going to encounter an ampharos which is of course a little bit of a trickier one to deal with for our backline so we're going to stay in here especially as the Fable is still okay for my Charizard, so we're going to be fine. They're running actually Zap Cannon. Of course, they're gonna get immediately the uh, debuff there as well, but crazy, like crazy to run the uh, Zap Cannon on this Pokemon. And um, maybe, maybe I should let this, like, not let this move go through and thought it might be another Zap Cannon, but I did let this move go through, which was definitely a mistake, as now I'm forced to go for Dragon Claw with my Charizard right now. And we have to see what they're going to run in the back. As they're going to have the Tapu Fini in the back. I can swap out into my Staraptor. And Staraptor will be able to take a charge move from the opponent as well. As this is going to be a Surf. And we're going to get them low as they're going to swap out into the Clefable. I did not know how much energy they had. So I went straight for the close combat. And I will be able to knock them out in time. But of course the Tapu Fini is coming in here right now. And my only hope is that I can go for the bait. And then go for the Blastman afterwards and knock them out. Bait coming through. The opponent calls it and we lose the game with it. Because I think actually if we went straight for the Blast Burn, we might have been able to win this game because Blast Burn does actually a surprisingly decent amount of damage against the Tapu Fini. But here right now, we didn't really get this one done as we can move on to the next game. We're going to have another Tapu Fini against us right now, which is going to be fine as we can go for the Zap Cannon and do a tremendous amount of damage here actually. As we're going to see the Greedon coming in. Greedon is also not really a Pokemon that wants to face the Registeel as you're going to get the first shield already from the opponent. As well as we can now let the move go through if it's a crunch, um, they of course have the chance of debuffing us, which they luckily didn't get here, 30% chance. So it's more likely not to get the debuff chance, which we twice don't get here, which is re really nice for us. But um, now we're going to be able to go for another close combat, not close combat, focus blast here of course, which is going to get the next shit from the opponent. And I'm going to let this move go through and swap now into my Staraptor. Again, I'm using my close as a say swap here because we have at least access here to the move close combat, which will come in clutch me maybe later on, but here right now I'm going to be able to use a shield against the Surf, hopefully I can farm down in time, I cannot, but I have a ton of energy now on my Staraptor, and what we're going to see right now is that we're going to see the opponent's Greedon coming back in, they're going to eat a close combat immediately, and this of course should knock them out, hopefully, super effective, and it does not knock them out, but we can swap out into our um, Registeel, and I should have just stayed in to be fair. As sadly, they are going to now have the Toxic Croak in the back. I would have just been able to farm down the Greedon with my other one. We would have had a clean sweep here by the Staraptor. Like this, we still have to win with our Charizard here, which is kind of sad. I really would have liked to see a, sweep, a clean sweep there with the Staraptor. It would have been super cool. But we can now move on to the next game. I encountered an absurd amount of Swampert with this team, which is not really ideal. I have not really seen too many Swamparts recently. Mainly, I think, because of all the Verizian walking around. But... In this team here, I encountered so many different ones, but we will be able to catch a move here again on our closer, which is going to take the Earthquake away better than, for example, the Charizard. That's the main reason why I did this. Here, there's no reason why I did this here right now, because I should have went for the Brave Bird. It does not really matter too much. Both most most likely would have done a ton of damage. I think Brave Bird would have knocked them, while Close Comet wouldn't, wouldn't have been able to do this, but it doesn't really matter, as we're going to be able to now realign and get a shield advantage already, as I can go for another Focus Blast again against the opponent and this is going to be getting the final shield here which is nice as now I will shield up next move it's going to be a flamethrower hopefully and it will be a flamethrower so like this we can go for another one but it's going to be a CMP tie and I'm fairly certain they're not at a flamethrower yet this is just crunch and like this I will be able to survive this go for the focus blast swap out into my Charizard get an energy advantage here 
but it's still not over. As the opponent has their swamp, but still loaded with some energy. So I have to go for a Dragon Claw here right now to knock them out. And this is going to get the easy knockout against the swamp, but now it depends on what they're going to run in the back. They're waiting out the clock here right now. So they might be weak against me in the back. It's going to be their own Charizard. And honestly, I should have just went for the Blast Burn here. I thought I would be able to survive their Blast Burn a little bit easier. But I was not able to, as you're going to see here right now. And Blastburn did more damage than I thought it would be. I don't think it would have been able to win this game anyways, though. So, like, that's kind of unfortunate. But we can move on into the next game. Decent lead for us, as we're going to get out the Giratina. Here, just gonna try to get the Zapcan debuff onto them, which makes the matchup for the Charizard way easier. And also, I can um, bait here real quick and just, like, try to see if they're going to run Ancient Power or not. And we saw the Shadow Sneak, so Charizard going to be a little bit easier. First Zap Cannon, no debuff. That's totally fine, we can still go for another one, get the debuff then, hopefully, but now I'm going to swap out here right now, but a debuff would have been amazing here right now, like, honestly, it would have changed everything so much more. As you can see here, now I'm in range for just another Dragon Claw, I would have been able to survive two Dragon Claws here without a doubt, and I would have had a way better time against the opponent, but luckily they decide to swap out into their muck, I will be able to go for the um, bait here, which works out really well, as you're gonna get the shield, and I can even get to another move, and this is going to be also, of course, the bait, which is going to get the final shield by the opponent and I will be able to take a move from the opponent's mark here right now as I can go for the focus bus get them insanely low but I know that they have a ton of energy here so I'm going to let the first move go through I'm going to be the dark pulse I'm going to let the second move go through as well going to be again a dark pulse here from the opponent and I can swap out now into my Staraptor and farm them all the way down get an energy lead have Two shields advantage here right now with my Staraptor, and we will see the Polyrath coming in as I going to try to catch a move onto their um, Giratina, which did not work out, and I can go for the full farm down here. They don't even get to another move, and our Staraptor is going to have a great time here against the Polyrath, going for the Brave Bird and getting the instant knockout against them. As we can move on into the next game coming up, we have another Giratina in the lead. Not ideal, but definitely playable for our Registeel, especially if we're gonna get the debuff early, this will be a very decent for us so let's hope and pray we're gonna get the debuff here as we see already that we are going to be fine with our back then as they don't run ancient power we get the zapkin off and we're actually gonna get the debuff here which is very cool finally we got this pretty early and i kind of still want to keep my registry alive i have kind of an abb line here with this team but i kind of want to keep my registry alive which is going to be better against the Ursteedix as well and i will get out the dragon claw getting the shield from the opponent but also, I can now let this move go through, and I'm still going to get to a Blast Burn against them. And this is going to be amazing, as hopefully I might even be able to go for another Blast Burn afterwards, if I have enough energy for that. But this Blast Burn is going to get shielded as well, which is a wild, as they're going to go for another charge move, which I didn't have to do, but it's going to be amazing for us, as now we can go for a Focus Blast against them. This is going to do a ton of damage, not going to get the knockout yet, but they're going to swap out into the Giratina, and I can catch a move on my Staraptor. This is going to be a Shadow Sneak, doing next to no damage against us and we can just go for nearly a full farm down against the opponent but I'm going to shield up the Dragon Claw against the opponent here as well as they're gonna get to another one and let this one go through which is I guess the better play for me and I'm going to farm up extra, so I can go for two close combats here, as the first close combat is of course designed to knock out the opponent's Giratina, which works out well. And the second one, of course, for the opponent's Steel type, but I did not expect to see the Alolan Sandslash here. So goodbye to you there as well, as the opponent just decides to forfeit as well there, so we're going to be able to move on into the next game. Going to be Rachi Steel against Rachi Rock. So, the Battle of the Rachis. A very nice force that we're going to see this in the lead here, because I don't want to see the Red Rock with our backlines. I mean, I guess our Staraptor is kind of fine against them. We will get the knockout, not in the knockout, but like the shield from the opponent here, as they're going to get the shield from me. We can take moves way easier than the opponent can take our moves, but I expect them to swap out here, but I still kind of had to go straight for it, and they're going to catch the move onto a Galissa pod, which is really unfortunate, but I can go ahead and go into my Staraptor and take advantage of that. Staraptor with a super effective wing attack here is gonna get a ton of energy in this scenario and they're gonna go for the Aerial Ace first. And I was kind of fearing that they might go for the um, yeah Liquidation here right now, but they're actually only gonna go for the Aerial Ace again, so I would've been able to survive it. But like this, I will be able to get all of this matchup with one hand energy and at least I'm gonna get the shield from the opponent here. But actually, I will be even able to go for two close combats, but they're going to catch it onto the Trevenant. A great play by the opponent and I have to little, uh, play a little bit around here and honestly this was a huge mistake. I should have just stayed in with my Staraptor. There was literally zero reason to swap out there. 
Like, I could have just farmed up extra until they get to the seed bomb, have then the close combat stored. And I don't know why I didn't do this, because now the opponent's gonna be able to get to a move here. And they are not low enough for me to go for a focus boss with my Reggie still. And this was just so badly played by me, because this is not going to knock out, like, this, the opponent's not going to knock out me, but they just need another charge move. And as you can see right now, the opponent is going to be easily able to survive this focus blast. And this was such an easy game to win, even with their um, catch there, which, of course, Shout out to the opponent, well played there. But I still would have been easily able to win this game if I just played it a little bit smarter than what I did there. And I played it really, really bad. So, ah, that's kind of, that's always like the things that really bothers me if I see that I just completely misplay something. So, yeah. Here we're gonna see the matchup against the Charizard, which I guess is kind of fine how we played this because we're gonna be able to go for the Dragon Claw. And for whatever reason, my opponent just decides to um, just always. Basically go one over the Dragon Claw or something because I'm always able to basically get to two moves here right now, which is not what's supposed to happen. Like the opponent was already a move before that. And I like this, I'm gonna get a ton of damage onto them. And also going to have the shield advantage, which I'm going to lose here immediately afterwards. But I have now energy advantage on a Staraptor. There is nothing that can take something from a Staraptor if I have energy advantage. And we're gonna see what's coming in here right now. It's going to be the Sand Sledge. And they're going to make a great swap, not on to my charge move, but still works out well for them, I guess, into the Trevenant, which yeah, it's, it's always so annoying. But I can get just an insane knockout here anyway, again, with the Brave Bird coming through. Goodbye there. And we can just swap out into our Reggie Steel. Yes, they have some extra energy on the Sand Slash, but they need three charge moves. They only get to two charge moves here right now before I can get to my charge move myself. And I would be able to one-shot them, so... Good game there. Next opponent, horrible lead force, but we can swap out into our Charizard. And we're gonna do the same thing that we always do. Dragon Claw first, then Blast Burn, because Dragon Claw is going to bait out the shield as the opponent usually wants to debuff me before I can hit the Blast Burn against them. Which is a smart play, but uh, it's very easily, um, yeah... I don't know, obvious there, as we're going to be able to just go for the Blast Burn, get a ton of damage onto the opponent here. But sadly, I realize I don't get to another Blast Burn here, and I maybe should have went ahead and went for the Dragon Claw instead, maybe baiting another shield as the opponent most likely wants to realign. But they're gonna go ahead and go for the Brave Bread right now, and I will let them go for another charge move here, as I'm going to keep my energy alive, and also, like, my Pokemon alive there, as well as I can just swap out into my Staraptor, get an energy lead, and we see the Greedon coming back in. And we can greet the Greedent with a close combat of our Staraptor after a while. But first, we're gonna let the first move go through because we're not debuffed yet. And like this, I can go for a close combat. This is gonna get the shield from the opponent. They're gonna get to another move here in time. I can overfarm a little bit further now as well, which is going to be nice. And one close combat should, I think, with the extra damage that they did get from the ring attack be enough to knock them out. And in comes the Verizian, and I make a huge mistake. I didn't go for the close combat. Why didn't I go for the close combat? It would have already sealed the deal. I want to be fancy, go for the Brave Bird, but um, yeah, the fanciness is going to lose me the game here right now, as you can see. I can go for a Focus Blast, the opponent just going to go for the full farm down, and I still win the game, which is very nice for me, but this was so unnecessary. If I just went for a close combat, I easily would have had the game already. Like at this point, I had the move stored, I would have been so fine, but I didn't because I'm an idiot, so <laughs> that's kind of it. And here we're gonna see again me swapping out into the different, like, wrong Pokemon basically against the Raptor, which is supposed to be the closer. Main reason here, Charizard has the better matchup against the Toxic Croak. Toxic Croak does still neutral damage with counter against me, against my um, Staraptor, so that's why I wanted to swap out first. And we're gonna see that the opponent has their Registeer right now, which going to have to shield up this close combat if they want to realign. But they're going to have to shield up the next one as well, because we can get there in time. And Staraptor is literally shredding away the opponent's shields, which is really nice, as I'm going to use a shield and farm them all the way down. As long as we don't get debuffed here, which of course we do, which is fine. Um, that's how it's supposed to be. We, we were lucky that we didn't get debuffed in the first one. The opponent decides to swap out into their Cresselia, and it's basically game over. Like, there's not a lot that the opponent can do here. We are going to have our uh, best answer for the Cresselia, which is going to be our Registeel onto the opponent. I still have my Charizard in the back. I have a loaded Staraptor in the back. And so, unless the opponent is going to be able to catch a move on from the Staraptor onto their Registeel somehow, there's nothing they can do about it. But I will be able to just play a little bit smarter around it and just overfarm always to 100 energy with my own Registeel. I see Cresselia has no impact against me. They swap into their own Registeel. I can farm them down. And 
And basically at this point of time, there's not a lot that really is happening here as we can just go for an easy instant Brave Bird against the Toxic Rogue, say goodbye to them and the Cressalia also just want to run away. Final game for the day. And actually, this team worked out really well, didn't it? Like, honestly, I found it was like a lot of fun to play. I didn't even have the best matchup either or something like this. I feel like it was kind of neutral everything. So it actually kind of worked. So if you want to see something like this again for the Great League or also for the Master League, let me know in the comment section. Would be definitely something interesting to take a look at, I would guess. But um, yeah, let me know in the comment section if you like this kind of style of video. Also subscribe if you haven't already as we're gonna be now into the final game as we can even take a Moonblast here with the Raptor, get one charge move off against the opponent's Cressalia, doing a ton of damage as I can even get to another Brave Bird in either real line or get the knockout against them as well. We're gonna get the shield which is fine, but now we're gonna see the opponent's Giratina. Just gonna go for the Dragon Claw and just to play it safe, just to know if they're going to have the um, Ancient Power or not. I'm going to use the Shield here in the beginning, just in case they have it. And they actually do have it, which is interesting for me, but it's totally fine as our um, Registeer at this point is basically unbeatable for the opponent. They have no charge move to hit them at all, like everything is resisted what they have on both of their Pokemon. My Charizard is still standing there, we can still go for a Dragon Claw against the opponent's Giratina. And with this, this is going to be it for today's video. Thanks all for watching, I hope I see you in the next one, and see you then. Bye bye!